Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 1.5 and Bell Simtech's MI8 module. Today I'm going to take a quick look at the Doppler navigation systems on board the MI8 and uh, take you through a very quick example flight. I am approximately here right now and I would like to fly to this lake over here. So if I take a little uh, measurement using the compass, sorry, the uh, the ruler in the map, uh, I can see that we're looking at about 40 kilometers at heading 259er. Now using the Doppler navigation system I can navigate to that point quite accurately without the use of any radio uh, navigational aids or, or even uh, with any reference to the ground in fact um, because this system measures your, your speed and direction of movement and drift uh, over the ground using a, a Doppler radar system which is fitted to the tail of the helicopter. Now the control panel is over here on the pilot navigator side uh, and before you can use it you need to make sure that on his triangular panel the Doppler and 5.5 volt light switch is on uh, and the Doppler system switch here is on. Also over his shoulder you have to make sure that the mode switch for the Doppler system is all the way across to operation mode. Uh, which it is just now and you get a green light so that you know that it's up and running. So I'm now going to set up the control panel. Now this is the control panel here for the Doppler navigation system and this is the drift angle uh, display which tells you if you are drifting in relation to the angle that is set. Uh, this is really useful actually uh, in the event that you have uh, a crosswind which in fact today we do so this is going to be very useful. Um, so I, I took a measurement of 259 so I want to set my map angle to 259er. I'm just going to hold down the plus button until we get to that setting. It does take a little bit of time to whiz through the numbers. Okay, so 259er, there we go, right on. Now I've got two options with regards to the distance. I could either leave it on zero and wait until the counter reaches 40, or I could set it to negative 40 and, uh, you know, fly towards the, the target area until it reads zero. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it on zero uh, and, and use kind of my current location as the reference point, and we'll simply count the distance from there. So at this stage, I would set the system on and we get this enable light. Uh, so I've got zero distance and 259, and so I now know that if I fly angle 259 while maintaining this drift angle gauge at zero, I'm going to reach my target. Now as a reference, it's much easier if I actually set my normal compass heading uh, bug as well, which is what I'm going to do just now. I'll set it on both pilot commander and pilot navigator side so that I can do it from either. There we go. So, uh, once I take off, I want to fly that heading and I want to maintain a zero drift angle. I'll fly from the pilot navigator seat, uh, just so that I can actually uh, monitor these gauges more easily. Okay, so, let's take off. Gonna swing around to the left, gain a little bit of height. There we go, and goes down and start moving. Oops. <laughs> With the wind the way it is today, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but that's kind of the whole point of this system, that even under these kinds of conditions, it should be possible for you to navigate quite accurately. Now, if I start to um, acquire any errors, uh, you know, drift in other words, that will become apparent in the drift angle kilometer window, which is at the top of the Doppler nav system. Uh, if I start to see uh, that number increasing, then I'll know that I'm, I'm drifting off course. So I'm now right on heading 259. My drift angle meter is showing zero. So right now I should be pretty much on course and my drift angle should not accumulate too high. You're always gonna get a little bit uh, you know, there's no way to fly the helicopter completely perfectly, 
uh, however you want to try and minimize it so you know, if, if I'm getting a, a drift to the right which is what it's indicating just now I could fly just slightly left uh, of my my target um, bearing uh, and try and maintain my drift at around about zero and that's going to take me back on course which I'm almost I'm almost there again actually so yeah, it takes a little bit of conscious effort, but it's quite a useful instrument. You can see now we've already traversed five kilometers. So if I maintain this course, try and keep my drift under control, I keep drifting to the right. I think that's just the effect of the crosswind we have today. Um, then we should arrive right on target. Now, in this instance, of course, our target is a gigantic lake, so we're not really going to miss it. Uh, but with this system, you can actually achieve uh, quite accurate feats of navigation. So we could find targets which are far smaller than this lake that we're aiming for today. It's going to accelerate a little bit. Well, we're going to watch out for uh, retreating, retreating blade stall. That sh that'll happen at about 260 kilometers an hour. But we can go a bit faster. See, that's the thing. As I increase my speed, uh, inadvertently I'm increasing my drift quite a bit. Well, I'm now aiming just left of the, the bearing that we're interested in, in order to try and bring us right on target. I'm doing not too badly, I think. Oh, no, actually, I'm accumulating a left drift now. Okay. Need to roll back on the target heading, and uh, actually maybe just a little bit to the right. Let's see if we can zero that out again. As you can see, it doesn't take much. Oh, oh no, no, drift, 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 drift. So what I'm doing is I'm using my yaw pedals to try and zero out the drift angle, and then I'm rolling the aircraft to try and get it on heading. Yeah, although I'm aiming just right of heading just now, so that we can get the drift uh, angle and distance down. Oh, and we're shaking quite a lot, and that's because I'm getting close to retreating blade stall, so let's just calm down our forward velocity a bit. It does make it rather difficult to read the instruments if you get a bit too much of that going on. Okay, we're in fairly balanced flight just now, although I am off... Oh, am I off to the right now? Yeah, I'm off to the right now. I'm kind of zigzagging over this course, but uh, the end result should be pretty accurate. And turn back onto the course heading now. Probably, actually, we should really aim just a little bit left. There we go. Let's level it out. Maintain my drift at about zero. Okay, that should, over the course of the remain, remaining distance, sort us out. That's us just on 20 kilometers now, so not far to run. So it's quite a clever system, this, uh, especially for uh, a utility helicopter. It's quite an advanced piece of equipment. And you could actually, you could create a flight plan just using the Doppler navigation system. If you broke it down into legs, uh, you know, i.e. you know, from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and so on, you could uh, actually navigate an entire flight plan just using this system. And it's very accurate. If you fly the instruments right, and you set your control panels correctly, you are going to arrive exactly where you want to. Let's 
so not much further to run now. Drift angle is pretty much zero now. Yeah, our deviation is, is pretty much zero, that's, that's working quite nicely. Let's try and reduce the amount of vibration we're getting here. Better. Okay, 27 kilometers. Just about 10 to run. We should have that lake uh, in visual pretty soon, I imagine. It's just over this rise. Increase my collective a little bit and get up over this. The MI-8 is such a nice helicopter to fly. Bell Simtech have done a fantastic job and the, the, the updates are kind of coming in thick and fast now. They seem to be enabling features here, there and everywhere. Not to mention, of course, the most important fan. Which is... Um, I kind of thought it was a joke. I never really thought they were going to implement it. But uh, I'm really glad they did. It's, it adds a nice little <laughs> immersion. Um, yeah. If anybody ever does a hind, they absolutely have to have the the cooling fan on the, the hind as well. But um, yeah, isn't that nice? A little bit of immersion for you sim pilots out there. I think that'll probably look particularly nice in uh, Oculus Rift or similar. Okay, let's climb up over this, and I think we should then be presented with our lake. Generator 2, oh. failure. Pulled a bit too much collective. Generator two, failure. That'll made my autopilot pop off. Let's put Generator that back on. Generator one, failure. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Generator one, failure. Yeah, maybe I should ease up on that collective a little bit. Well, actually, my engines are not. Yeah, they're not uh, at the same RPM. I think that's that's probably the uh, the crosswind that's doing that. It's nicely simulated. I'll test that once we reach the lake. By oh, there's the lake. <laughs> I'll reach that by uh, turning the helicopter around and seeing if uh, it's number two that's reading low just now. I wonder if number one will read high if I spin the, the chopper around. So there you go. That's us. We've reached the lake. It would actually seem that the angle I measured off the map was slightly off, because that lake is actually appearing just off to our left. Uh, I don't think I had a very accurate uh, reading of, of the position of uh, uh, that particular FARP. So, uh, both engines are actually now reading the same now. If I throttle up again... Oh, no, nope, I made it pop off. Yeah, so if I have quite a high collective setting, number two reads low. Let's turn the chopper around. Generator one, failure. Just out of interest. Generator one, failure. Yes, yeah, if I turn the chopper around... No, it's still number two that reads low, actually. No, I'm not sure why that would be. Anyway, I just thought that was a bit of a bit, a bit kind of interesting. So uh, that's uh, that's the basics of Doppler navigation. If I wanted to do another leg now, all I would do is set the system off, set all of these values to what I wanted for my next leg, and then set it back on again. And that's basically it. That's how the system operates. I hope that you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.